As a wise man or wise band once said in the words of Eiffel 65, I am blue. Daba D? Daba do. Yes, yes. I think that was it. Hey friends, Ash here with Zen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Blue fragrances. That's what we're talking about here today. Got 10 of them lined up right over here. A bunch of blue bottles looking back at me and one gray bottle, which is kind of like the odd man out stupid bottle. But what we're talking about more specifically is the 10 best blue fragrances for everyday use, all year use, day round use, versatility, something like that. Realistically though, I could probably make this list just like every blue fragrance that's ever been made because that's what they're for. But we're gonna highlight 10 of them today. Let's jump into it, shall we? Let's check these out. And this is another PSA announcement for my LuckyScent.com code. That code has changed to 10 gents, one zero gents, instead of gents 10. I think they're gonna change the code each month so that you guys don't get complacent and go like, hey, I know what the code is. It's, oh, it doesn't work anymore. So it's 10 gents now. It still gets you 10% off the website. So if you shop at Lucky Scent, that's the code now, 10 gents. TwistedLily.com is still gents 10. I know it's confusing, so. Yeah, Twisted Lily, Gents 10, 10% off. Lucky Scent, 10 Gents, 10% off. All right, fragrances, fragrances. First up, Dior Sauvage, also known as the Johnny Depp Special. This is Sauvage Eau de Toilette. You could also go with Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Bergamot, Pepper, and Broxen and Lavender, some of the notes in this fragrance. It has fantastic performance. You can use this literally anytime. The compliment factor is through the roof. And best of all, and this is for sure the best part about the fragrance, that cat magnet, eh, baby. And also the atomizer is uh, pressurized. Whew. Sauvage has been ripped off, knocked off, and has been the inspiration of many other fragrances out there. This is one of the best selling fragrances of all time for good reason. If you're looking for a fragrance that can do it all any time of year, just about any age really, Sauvage will do it for you. After that one, a much cheaper fragrance from Discounters. This is Coach for Men. Comes with a little leather thing. Tag. Got a built-in atomizer, bottle looks pretty nice, feels good in the hand, and uh, people know the brand Coach, so there's a lot going for this. You say, why does it matter that people know the brand Coach? It doesn't to me, but to some people out there, it does. It actually smells a bit similar to Jimmy Choo Man, uh, but between the two, if I could get only one, I'd go for the Coach. They're both pretty inexpensive, but the Jimmy Choo will also get the job done, so keep that in mind also. This has ambergris, suede, and cardamom, along with some unique fruity notes in the top, including pear, and kumquat, along with a bit of citrus. Yeah, not too many men's fragrances rocking that kumquat. Coach for Men though, uh, for the price that you can pick it up for, really hits out of its, its weight class because it's great at pulling compliments and attention. Maybe the performance could be a little bit better, but for the price, I think it's a great buy. Next up, the only niche fragrance in today's list. It's from Parfums de Marly. It's Sedley, as lemon, mint, lavender, uh, sandalwood and ambroxan as some of the notes in the fragrance. Yes, there are other niche blue fragrances out there, namely Elysium from Raja Parfum. Also, you could say like Greenlee or Percival from Parfums de Marly. And uh, there are other fragrances out there that you could say have that blue fragrance vibe in the sense that you could use them whenever you want, but we're trying to keep it pretty simple today. So we're just going with settling. This one's very bright. It's zingy, has pretty good performance. Definitely gonna be more of a spring summertime fragrance, but with pretty much all blue fragrances, you can use them whenever. Easy to wear a warm weather fragrance in cold weather. Sometimes not as easy uh, to do the reverse. After that, why Eau de Parfum, Yves Saint Laurent, another one of the three horsemen of the blue fragrances. Uh, the third one coming up here in a little bit. Yeah, I see it right there. It's eyeballing me. You know what it is, right? If you don't, you'll you'll find out soon. And you'll be like, oh, of course. So why Eau de Parfum? This one uh, got a different of a little approach to a blue fragrance. You know, it's got apple in there. It does have citrus as well, but the apple is more prominent in here. Whereas most, not all, but most other big time blue fragrances make use of citrus as the more prominent uh, fruit in the top. It does have ginger though. So you have that, that bit of zing in the opening that so many people love. It's got a good amount of sweetness here as well. Amberwood and sage in here give it a touch of a, an herbal feel as it dries. Very slight though. Why Eau de Parfum is a great attention puller. This stuff absolutely crushes as far as pulling compliments. That's why so many people wear it. Lunarosa Carbon is up next. This is Prada. And this one smells a bit similar to Dior Sauvage. 
So this is Prada's Sauvage. Uh, it has lavender, it has ambroxan, it has metallic notes to it. It is a little bit smoother than Dior Sauvage. It is less aggressive. The performance is not quite as good, but it is ultimately a bird of a similar feather to Dior Sauvage. This could work for you for a number of reasons. Maybe Sauvage is just a little too ostentatious for you, a little bit too in your face but you kind of like the, the profile. You like what it's got going on there. You, you like the cut of its jib. And so then Luna Rosa Carbon as well. Perhaps you're just a mega fan of that style of fragrance. And so you want to have Sauvage and Carbon. That way you can kind of use them interchangeably whenever you see fit. Carbon is maybe a little easier to pull off in like an office situation or something like that because it gets you that same or similar scent profile, but it's a little bit more. Obviously though, massive compliment puller, so yeah. Now this one that's coming up is possibly the classiest of the bunch. I'd say if it's not the classiest, it's second, but probably the classiest. If we're just talking straight up sophistication, where's the gray Poupon? Put it on my escargot and give me a glass of champagne. But it's not what it's called, it's not champagne, it's champagne. Narciso Rodriguez, for him, Blue Noir, Eau de Parfum. Musk, Vetiver, Cedar, Amber. It's got a little bit of a similarity to Cartier Declaration. So that's where you're gonna get that a nice sophisticated edge to the scent. It's a little bit soapy and clean and fresh. It's uh, decidedly different from everything else on today's list. Instead of having that, that sweetness come from a big blast of amber wood or a lot of fruit off the top mixed with ginger, instead this one is more musk forward, but really well done. Love the fragrance and it's kind of under the radar. So the other one that could be potentially seen as one of the classiest of the bunch here is the third of the three horsemen of the blue fragrance, Apocalypse. It is Bleu de Chanel, Eau de Parfum. Grapefruit, ginger, incense, amber, and mint. Some of the notes in the fragrance. This one, it has that DNA, that blueprint of the blue fragrances just done up perfectly. The incense is light and appealing and it gives it enough oomph that you can pull it off in cool weather. And yet the opening with that ginger, that brightness mixing together with a nice ever so slightly sweet citrus makes this really pop in warm weather as well. Any age range can pull it off, anybody can pull it off and everyone will love the way it smells. For me, Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum is much easier overall to wear than Sauvage, but Sauvage is probably more likely to get you noticed. So it really depends on what you're going for there. Blue de Chanel is a little bit more understated, a little bit more mature. Sauvage, a little bit more fun and potentially headache inducing. Now this next one, some people may not think of as a blue fragrance necessarily, but I think it fills all the little boxes. It ticks the boxes that you need to be a blue scent and it's Lacoste Loam Intense. Pretty inexpensive from discounters. Bottle, very simplistic, not much to it. I'd say of everything here, it looks the cheapest for sure. You put this bottle up against any of the other ones we're talking about, and it looks like the least amount of effort went into it. And the cap that weighs one gram does not help that. And yet, it smells good, real good. Rhubarb, citrus, ginger, vanilla, and vetiver. Some of the notes here. So you have a nice uh, masculine woodiness underneath it all with the vetiver there. The vanilla gives it very pleasant sweetness that you pick up pretty much right away. My favorite part, of course, is the introduction of rhubarb into the opening. Actually, is one of the more prominent notes in the opening. So instead of having that more generic citrus and ginger opening, which this does make use of, the rhubarb gives it a nice twist, nice tartness. Always thought that Loam Intense was one of the better fragrances that you could pick up for next to nothing. Next up, we have Loam Rocas. Yeah, I looked that up and that's how you say it. Apparently Rocas, yeah. Cool. I shot like 52,000 videos where I'm just like, Rocus, 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 Rocus. Cue somebody in the comments. Actually, it's not Rocus either, idiot. Ugh. Blood orange, juniper, pineapple, tonka. Some of the notes to the scent. Also very inexpensive. So that's good as well. Some nice cheapies in here, actually. This one, the coach and the Lacoste all very affordable. So if you don't have too much to spend, start with those. This is a fragrance that has grown on me tremendously since I first got it in. And that lowered price absolutely helps with that. This has, uh, at least for my own personal taste, replaced 
Dolce & Gabbana's K Eau de Toilette. I'll pretty much never ever wear that fragrance because if I want something similar-ish to it, I'll wear this instead. This is an awesome casual fragrance, uh, office fragrance, uh, spring summertime scent, daytime scent, and I think any age range can pull this off because even though uh, some people may think of it as a little bit more of a youthful type fragrance, it doesn't go too sweet and it does have a nice little sophisticated air to it. So I think guys middle-aged and older can pull that off as well if they want a little blue fragrance action in their lives. All right, last fragrance. This is from Versace. It's Dylan Blue. I gotta put Dylan Blue in here uh, because for me, it's Sauvage Blue de Chanel Y up at the top. And then Dylan Blue is just kind of like that next tier, just right below it there because everybody knows Versace, everybody knows Dylan Blue, but it's not quite at that level as far as you know, people buying it and wearing it as the top three. But I think if you don't want to spend the money to get one of those uh, of the big three, that Dylan Blue might be your best bet. It has a similar idea as Blue de Chanel, but it doesn't smell like Blue de Chanel. So what I mean by that is you have the incense in here, you have the ginger, you have the citrus, you have kind of an aquatic backbone to the fragrance as well. You got a little bit of spice in there, you got ambroxan. So when you look at it, it's a similar idea as well Blue de Chanel has. But I would say Blue de Chanel is classier between the two. Maybe Dylan Blue leans a little bit more youthful. And while Dylan Blue does not get the same amount of love, uh, critical love as Blue de Chanel, for a cheaper price, it does a darn good job at pulling off the same thing. And by that, I mean wearing it in the same places at the same times. I really like the presentation as well. I think it looks classy. I think it looks nice. And uh, frankly, I like Dylan Blue. I know that some people don't like Dylan Blue uh, and some people are very vocal about disliking it. I think it's pretty good. It's not a disappointment for me. It's an easy wear. It does what it's supposed to do. And that is be a fragrance that you can pull off spring, summer, fall, winter, day, night, a dumb reach. It's what it is and it does it darn good. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me here until the end. Uh, thank you guys for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later. You want people to buy your fragrance, get them a compliment. It's like the most addictive drug for people that are into fragrances. Get a compliment, all of a sudden you're like, that's me, baby. That's all me, I smell. I knew I smelled good. Mm. Mm. That's just the first compliment. You should see them after like the 10th one, looking strung out, spraying themselves 52 times. I'm not a sissy sprayer. Good for you, dude, good for you. Go to rehab, fragrance rehab. I'm gonna start that up soon. It's gonna be a course, don't worry. Pay me $50 a month, I'll go ahead and rehab you from your fragrance addiction. I'm just playing. I'm not gonna actually do that. Now there's gonna be somebody out there that actually does, and I'm gonna do hustlers, hustlers. All right, guys. That's gonna do it for me. 10 blue fragrances you can wear all year round, man. What was that? That was a weird, that was like uh, the Jesus from uh, The Big Lebowski. <laughs>